Hey everybody, how are you? This is Dr. Heather Carden coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather. If, if you don't know me and you're brand new to my page, I also have a blog which is AskDrHeather.net. My goal here is actually to help you understand the current trends going on in the health and wellness community, understand what the truth is and what it's not, and what things may be or what they are not. So the amazing thing after practicing 20 years is we didn't have internet 20 years ago. There was no Pinterest. People weren't Googling diseases. Now it's such an exciting time because I can come to you live in your home, help you kind of sift and sort through all of the information out there and really what might apply to you or maybe someone that you know. So you'll see all over my blog, it is Ask, Act, Achieve. Ask a question, let's get some action together, let's come live and let's see if we can help understand that so you can actually achieve the health that you want. So hot topic, you guys uh, know that I've been doing a 30 day Facebook Live, so I think today is day seven, I need to count, but a lot of people are asking, what about fasting? I think I did a video a couple weeks ago about keto, so I'm gonna talk about that one second and then we're gonna jump over to fasting because hunger and fatigue can be the same and are not be the same and they're not always solve the same. So super quick, I like the example, people are like, oh, I'm going keto. They're eating keto cookies and keto bread and keto noodles. And sometimes you can eat too many keto things that are too many carbs, which means you never even get there. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're talking about fasting. Fasting is a super, super hot topic. There's amazing researchers out there who've been studying this for decades, finally getting the notoriety that they need. The research is coming out. Uh, so let's talk about that. People talk all the time about intermittent fasting. So let's just define that. Then we're gonna talk about the benefits benefits of prolonged fasting and why this is something you want to do. So fasting means abstaining from. So if you have a colonoscopy tomorrow, your doctor may say, don't eat anything after midnight or until your procedure, or maybe you're going to the dentist or any type of surgery, you might not eat. Maybe you got food poisoning or the flu yesterday, you wouldn't eat for a couple days because you're giving your body a rest. So we need to think of fasting not as a weight loss tool. It definitely is a tool to help facilitate fat loss. But the main purpose that we had fasting a long time ago, even back in the biblical days, was for healing. Think of your puppy when it's sick. It lays there, make sure it has water. But why doesn't it run around? Why doesn't it keep going to the food bowl or the pantry? Dogs are not on autopilot all the time, but let's talk about you. So what is fasting? Fasting simply defines or intermittent fasting. I like to call it intermittent feeding, kind of like Dr. Don McDiagostino does. It simply is defined as a period of time that you are feeding or eating and a period of time that you're not. So if you have breakfast at 6 a.m. and then you have lunch and maybe a couple snacks and you have dinner at 8 p.m., that means you ate in a window of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is 14 hours. That gives you eight hours to sleep. So now we're hearing, I know in the 1980s when we were carbohydrate feeding, breakfast is the most important meal. It still is very important, but the timing has a whole other meaning now. Because if you're carb feeding, you absolutely need to load your body up with some protein in the morning because if you had carbohydrates at night, your body runs out of its glucose or glycogen, then it taps into your lean muscle mass and you start losing muscle mass. If you refeed with fats and protein, your body's less likely to do that because the enzymes that are turned on. So kind of look at your daily plan and say, when do I eat breakfast? So I was in the clinic this morning. It always inspires me to talk about things. I ask people when they bring their food diary into me, what time did you eat breakfast and why did you eat? Not what, but why? Did you eat because you were hungry? Well, no, I'm supposed to. It's on autopilot. Were you hungry? No, I wasn't hungry. So then why did you eat? Well, and then they, they're like, I wasn't hungry. I had a bowl of oatmeal. Then I was hungry. Like, I don't want to eat because it makes me hungry. That's absolutely true because you have a bowl of oatmeal. You have a banana. You have some berries and your slushy. Like, too much fruit in your slushy. Whatever the carbohydrate is, it's going to drive up your glucose because they all require insulin. You're going to turn on dopamine, which is your feel-good hormone. And then your energy drops after 30 minutes. And then the whole epinephrine, norepinephrine you need to eat again comes about. So when we talk about intermittent fasting, it's defined is a period of time that you eat or don't eat. So you will hear people say, oh, I'm doing 12-12. That means they're eating for 12 hours and they're not eating for 12 hours. In the not eating hours, you can absolutely have water. You can absolutely have tea. There's some myth about doing some fat coffees and teas, which we'll address. So I may be a little windy today. So normally when we're sleeping, we're not eating. What happens is our body's resting. So your dinner needs to be about three to four hours before you go to bed. 
Why? It takes about that long for the, for the gut to digest the food. We have more nerves in our gut than our spinal cord. Think about that for a minute. So every time you're feeding, you're exciting the whole nervous system. It's having to digest all the food, having to process it. Is it a friend? Is it a foe? What do I make out of this food? Is it toxins? Is it not? Your body has to sift and sort, which takes a ton of energy and a ton of signaling going on. So if you eat at 8 p.m. and you're like trying to go to bed at 10, you turn the TV off at 9.45, the TV stimulates your brain, you're still digesting food till midnight night, you might not get into delta or theta sleep until probably midnight. So you hear people say, well, I actually just slept 30 extra minutes and I broke a plateau from trying to lose fat or my thyroid got better. My adrenals got better once I slept 20 more minutes. So super important thing is actually making sure you're eating four hours before bedtime and make sure that it's a little heavy in fat. So you keep your blood sugar normal. And then when you sleep and wake up, Ask yourself after you have 12 to 16 ounces of water when you wake up, because that will stimulate digestion. It will stimulate your lymphatic system. It actually saturates the cells because we're not drinking when we're sleeping. And then ask yourself, am I just having that coffee and that oatmeal or those eggs because it's routine? I'm on autopilot or am I really hungry or is that the only convenient time? So ask yourself that before you feed. And then when you do feed or eat, then make sure you're picking something of high quality. You know, I endorse a low fat, I'm sorry, a low carb, high fat ketogenic diet. So bacon and eggs would be great. I love my chia pudding or porridge. So make sure that when you're eating, you're eating because you're hungry. So the topic was hunger does not equal energy and does not eat fatigue. Oftentimes we can be hungry when we overfeed say you're eating 14 hours a day you're feeding 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 your nervous system you're actually going to get tired when you're eating 14 hours a day so 6 a.m to 8 p.m we often think oh we're tired so we need to eat that starts that whole glycogen glucose circle of insulin dopamine all that stuff again you're actually better off having a bit of a fast you're going to feel more clear-headed because all the energy is going to your brain and not towards your gut to digest the food so intermittent fasting you may want to pick a time identify i generally have people write it down like when you woke up so if you woke up at six were you hungry go ahead and drink water and shower then identify when you're hungry because how you feed is super important we're getting ready to do a company-wide reboot i am a, a keto reboot specialist for the company prove it and independent promoter so i've taught a keto fast blast is what we call it Cardin center for wellness for many years to help people break a plateau if people have been have some health challenges again under doctor supervision we have done that for athletes at all levels to help cut weight a safe way to do it so identify if you're tired throughout the day and you're going to sleep and can't really sleep, first of all, let's talk about when are you eating and when are you not eating. So I'll let you guys do that homework at home and it's okay if it's different. So I actually do it. Today was a work day for me. I had a coffee with a little bit of heavy fat. So the question would be, did I break my fast when I had my fat coffee at nine? So biohackers may have a little different. different. If you're having calories by definition, then yes, you broke your fast because if you're putting grass-fed butter or you're putting keto cream or functional fat collagen in your coffee if your <clears throat> glucose level goes up because of the caffeine or something in it then yes you broke your fast so there's a couple different definition we talk about intermittent fasting but have the water identify if you're hungry and then you can eat and then try to plan your dinners again not on autopilot but four hours before bedtime. You will hear people say, oh, I eat like in a six hour window. Well, that, that's true. I often do that. I'll have water and tea in the morning. Tea doesn't have any calories or coffee. And then maybe eat from noon to like 6 p.m. That allows my body to have an amazing time to get the signaling property and to help heal my body. So that's the definition of intermittent fasting. It's generally done something where you're fasting 12, 14 hours a day. So you can call that. So again, just based on your sleep cycle. So again, just shift that clock, maybe eat at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Just make sure you have time to get your body in proper set to sleep. And again, you can drink water and broth and other things throughout that time for your body to actually stay well hydrated. So let's talk about <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Talked a lot today. Let's talk about what happens at 12 hours because that's kind of important. Most people aren't doing that. At 12 hours, your body starts to tap into your glucose um, at the cellular level. It doesn't really tap much into the non uh, taps into the non-hepatic, which is non-liver glycogen. And then after that 12 hours, up to 48 hours, it starts tapping into the glucose and glycogen floating around. So your body starts using that instead of the food that you're eating because you're not eating food when you're fasting. So why is that important? Why would fasting give me more energy because oftentimes we think we're going to eat when we're tired and that could be the vicious cycle of carbohydrates we eat carbohydrates and we're hungry in third minutes and we're tired when you start feeding with fat and eating whole green carbohydrates you're going to find out that your body's going to have this amazing energy because if i am feeding 
12 hour window, which is normal, eight to eight or six to six. Again, there's more nerves in my gut. My body's having to process all the toxins. It's having to go through the whole digestive process. Nobody chews their food 50 times, which you're supposed to be. A lot of us have a lot of bowel issues. So the bowel's overworking, underworking. Maybe you're missing your gallbladder. Your liver's got to work harder. Your stomach's got to work harder. If you're eating carbs, you could be deficient in B12, which is super important for the stomach. Or maybe you have a candida infection, which depleted the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. I know a lot of chemistry there. But it's important to know that there's 30 players involved with digestion. So every time you put anything in your mouth besides water, then your body has to do all that work. So if your body's working, working, digesting food all day, something from the vending machine, something through drive through it makes sense that you're going to be fatigued because you are eating all day long. It's true. So if we can reduce the time that you're eating, you reduce the exposure to toxins so your immune system and your whole gut system doesn't have to work as long during the day, then you're going to have much more better capability of your brain because now your brain gets all the energy, not your gut. And when your brain has the energy, you think clearer, you make better decisions, you go to sleep much better. Then the amazing thing can happen is that oftentimes the fat starts to fall off because we know that there are certain enzymes that turn on in periods of fasting that stop the craving. Your body is so 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 smart is a divine divine being that we live in so smart that if i took a knife and cut my skin my body would know what to do i just use it because i was here on on the camera but if you don't have if you're one of the glucose or glycogen your body goes to your fat storage that's what it's there for it's to break down into ketone bodies so between that zero to 24 hours, our body uses glucose and glycogen. Then it starts tapping into some of that stored fat once we're done with the sugar. And this can happen in endurance athletes as well. Then that 48 hours to 120 hours, amazing thing can happen. And please check with your healthcare provider. If you have blood pressure issue or if you have diabetes, type 1, type 2, type 3, please check with your healthcare provider before doing anything. What we see, though, is that we see a reduction in the white blood cell production. So it actually stimulates our immune system. I want to keep it kind of simple. I made four pages of notes, but I'm going to go quickly. So when you stop craving, then your brain is actually going to start focusing on what you're doing and recalling what you're thinking and what you're talking about and not focus on the food that you can't have. It gets laser focused in on your job instead of thinking about food. If you can turn off those craving enzymes that happen really after about 24 hours, that autopilot, so to speak, stops saying, go to the vending machine, go get this. Hey, it's eight o'clock PM. I'm supposed to have a glass of wine right now or a bowl of popcorn. Your brain stops doing that. So Christy, great question. Let me uh, come back to that. So what happens is when we start fasting past that 24 hours up to 72 hours, we get rid of the glucose, we get rid of the glycogen, then the body can rest and tap into stored fat and the liver does all that work. It breaks it down. We're not having to worry about your stomach enzymes and your pancreatic enzymes and your liver enzymes because when you eat fat or your body metabolizes fat, makes ketone bodies, it doesn't require any insulin. So you don't get that dopamine yo-yo cycle going on. And so then we start to actually see our body change composition. We start to see our insulin really balanced because we're meant to do that. Think of the hunter and gatherers. They would go out in Kansas, they would go out for three or four days and shoot one buffalo they would all overeat the protein or if there's blueberries that grow three weeks out of the year in Kansas or pumpkins that grow three weeks they would overfeed on that yes it's a carbohydrate but it's a short period of time so when people start to fast longer than that 24 getting at 48 hours you're gonna see amazing things happen what happens is is that you actually trigger stem cell regeneration so you're hearing a lot of people getting stem cell injections. Do you know that your body's designed to do that in a fasting state? So the question is, what about exogenous ketones? So it depends on who's exogenous ketones. It depends on what your body's doing. If you're using caffeine, which can be very, very beneficial with using a beta hydroxybutyrate caffeine. However, if you're caffeine sensitive, if your adrenal glands are out of balance, maybe you have a, a coffee bean allergy. A lot of people do that have an allergy to peanuts and vanilla beans and coffee beans. And that actually could throw your glucose all out of balance. So check it out. So check your blood glucose, check your pulse rate. And this is how they used to do in the old days to see if you had a food allergy is they would have you fast for three to five days, then have you eat green beans. If your pulse went up after eating, or if your blood pressure went up or your blood sugar went up, then it was an allergy for you. That's how we used to do it instead of scratching your back or taking whole red blood cells. So fasting actually increases stem cell production and regeneration. It also forces the body to tap into the stored fat and get it out of your body. We don't want it there forever, right? Don't, we don't want to be a brown bear hibernating forever. It also turns on a hormone called brain, it's called BDNF, which is brain derived neuroplastic or neurotrophic factor, which it works like fertilizer for your brain.
So I know we all want our brain to keep growing, not shrinking, which happens in Alzheimer's, dementia, and chronic PTSD and TBIs. We want our brain to grow. So BDNMF actually is stimulated during fasting because, again, we're not digesting food. Now your brain has the right thing to do, and you're going to see the leptin start to balance out. We see this all the time in babies because they sleep all the time. Their heads are really big. That's because the BDMF is higher, and their body's able to do that to regenerate their bread as they're making all those synapses or connections or messengers happening throughout your body. If you're going to hear the word brain synaptic or brain neuroplasticity, that's actually regenerating the parts of the brain that didn't used to work. So the brain should be nice and mushy if you've ever done a cadaver. I would say, let me know, because I like to talk about dissection and cadavers. But what happens as the brain ages, it starts to shrink. It gets, again, just like anything, um, our skin starts to get a little uh, little spots on it, a little wrinkly, not as fresh and plump as it used to be. The same thing happens with your brain. We know that during fasting states and actually using a higher fat diet, but we're going to talk about fasting, that we actually increase that BDMF, which is that brain fertilizer. We also increase the synapses between your brain. So you hear people who've been in this research for a long time thinking, oh my gosh, I'm a super, super on point. I feel like I remembered everything I was supposed to say, even though I made some notes here. Um, and then adenopectin, this is the other thing that we find people who, <clears throat> sorry, so let me go back to neuroplasticity. So when you decrease the stress, food stress, eating food stress, chemical toxicities that you could be drinking or eating uh, um, while you're digesting your food. There's stuff hidden in things you don't know all the time in salad dressings and nut butters and processed foods and all that kind of stuff. Your body is going to reduce the amount of stress trying to over-process that food and then it's going to let your gut rest, your brain's going to click on, and you're going to have a lot more chance of having that neuroplasticity or regeneration of that brain tissue. So adenopectin is what we found um, in low levels of obese people. Why is this important? Because we know it's important. It's a protein that's specific for fat. And what we want to have as we age, we want to age slower. We want to have the adenopectin up higher because low adenopectin, a protein, again, from fat, actually increases body fat storage. Through fasting, we can kind of reset that button, so to speak. And we'll define fasting here in a minute. Again, this is a 48, 72, up to 120 hours. We see these changes starting to take. Why the duration of time? Some people have a bigger fat load. Some people have more glucose or glycogen in their body. Some people have more stress. There's a lot of factors that determine when your body starts clicking that on. It does it naturally without you having to say, hey, go make that adenopectin. Hey, go get some neuroplasticity. I need some BDMF for my brain because I'm not feeling super, super good. That's a reason to do it. It's not all about fat loss. So we look at IGF being a precursor for things like cancer, the rate at which we age. Look at astronauts. They age 12 times one year in space. So we see that fast facilitated. We see that facilitated super fast. We know that when we go in those fasted states and then we refeed with healthy fat, we have a better chance of controlling the um, IGF factor, which is found in a lot of cancers. And also we see the messenger increasing. So adenopectin is low in obese people and we want it to be, and it increases body fat. So if we can increase it, then we're gonna decrease body fat naturally. We're gonna have the anti-aging process slow way down and then we're gonna have longer lasting effects. So people say, how often is too often to fast? So we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So when we start to look at fasting past 72 hours, we're talking about that 48 hour mark up to 120, the immune system resets. What happens is our body starts to regenerate specifically white blood cell count. So we look at a lot of disease processes or people with significant food allergies. We use a lot of folate, a lot of B12. Our body's an army. The white blood cell counts are out there fighting and fighting. So in a strep infection, you may find your white blood cell counts at 14 to 20. Well, if they've been overused, they should be 5 to 7.5. You'll find them lower in the threes or the fours. And it's not means you have cancer there, but your body's just overworked and overtired from fighting that. We know at 72 hours, and these articles are all all over. I'm not a researcher. I simply read credible literature and help you bring that information to you. We know that it, you actually increase white blood cell production three times normal. We're seeing the trends go down all the time due to people having more things like uh, autoimmune diseases or Lyme's disease or HIV or a lot of those communicable diseases or a metal toxicity, lead toxicity, vaccination toxicity, or just general life toxicity from molded stuff in the house and other things. Well, if you can get your body to fast for 72 hours, then you're 
you're going to reset that immune system. So hopefully that helps answer your questions. When we define intermittent fasting, which is a period that you're feeding and not feeding, and then fasting. So again, why would we not want to eat donuts all day? They taste fantastic. Well, if you want to slow down your aging process, if you want to give your body a little brain fertilizer and you want to have better cognition, you want to slow down the aging trainer bus, then fasting would be an amazing practice. And we don't want you doing the same thing every day. We don't want like, I'm going to eat six to seven hours a day between 9 a.m. and 4 to 5 p.m. You want to switch that up and create that metabolic confusion. The most important meal is breakfast. So identify when you're hungry. Two to three percent dehydration means that you're actually could feel like you're hungry. So get up, have 12 to 16 ounces of water and see how your body feels and then start introducing those. So the question is before, when I've done a keto fast blast before we had exogenous ketones, I would do some fermented grain powder because I know people need those macronutrients because as your body's fasting, you get rid of toxin, getting rid of all those old white blood cells, getting rid of all that stuff our body doesn't want that's been exposed to. You, it also takes a little of the good stuff with you, like water and sodium, potassium, magnesium, selenium, molybdenum, all those type of things. So you just want to reintroduce those. So when you start to reintroduce, that's when all the green leafy stuff is so important. A good bone broth soup made of fish bones or oxtail or chicken feet. You can't really replace those because you're getting all the good yummy collagen, all that stuff in there. So hopefully this helps you define what's happening and what's not happening when you're feeding. When you're feeding, you're overstressing your nervous system. Yes, it is important to eat because that's how we get our energy. Oftentimes we confuse fatigue equal low energy means we need more food, which is absolutely not true. That's why kids want to have a carb snack before they go to bed because they don't want to go to sleep. They want to perk their brains back up. Or maybe you've been in a carb coma where you've had too many crackers or too many donuts or birthday cake and you find yourself in a very, very sleepy place. So I do want to allow some time to take questions. I'm traveling the rest of the week, so I'm going to be super brief on those days. But I had a lot of questions, like my box is full. Like, can you please help us understand what's going on? People are talking about bone broth and butter and cream and collagen. So what's fasting? It means you're not eating. You've selected a time. We would never have you fast if you're hungry. That would not be something we would do. So as a physician, I wouldn't recommend that. But if it's to get through to help a metabolic state that you've been diagnosed and we need to do that, then there's things like Epsom salt bath and essential oils and rock salt lamps. There's a lot of things you can do. Oftentimes it's a stress that's causing us to be hungry and we're not even hungry. That's just an autopilot response. I'm stressed. I got to eat. I got to pack tomorrow. I'm leaving super early and I'm on here on Facebook. I should be doing other things. So uh, hopefully that helps answer your questions and define intermittent fasting, hunger versus not hunger and why we eat. We eat to actually supply our body with energy. We eat so our body can break down all the amazing food that we can have. So our body can be its own pharmacy. It can make its own white blood cell counts, make its own army of neutrophils and gaminoglobulins. It can actually make our body's natural tranquilizer like calcium, magnesium from the fish and the nuts and seeds that we eat. We can make healthy hair from the protein that we we eat. But if it's all junked up, it's all carved up and it's all toxic with like ketchup or barbecue sauce or some unwanted dressing or fried covering on it, then you're probably not going to get the nutrition you want. You're probably going to see yourself aging a little bit faster and not feeling as good as you want. So hopefully I brought a little bit of value. I always want someone to be a skeptic and say, I don't, I don't know what she said about BDMF. I'm going to have to go check that. I don't understand this neuroplasticity. Go challenge yourself. Go look it up. You're going to go, oh my gosh, this whole time in the eighties, I was told to eat from the morning you wake up to the morning you go to bed. It's not true. We now, four to five decades later, we know we're all involved in a really, really bad experiment called no fat, high carb, and there's no essential carbohydrates. Have you ever met someone who's carbohydrate deficient? If you have, let me know. I've yet to find them in the US. Let me see, I've been to Asia. I've been to Canada. I've been to uh, over to uh, London. I've been over to Sweden and Nor Norway. Have you found someone who's carbohydrate deficient? I have not because there's no essential carbohydrate, essential amino acids, essential proteins. Those are things we need to eat. So we're coming up into a 60 hour reboot with Prove It, which I am one of the coaches and proud to be there. So we help you get through it. We are not doing a true dry fast because we are having you drink water. Dry fast is nothing. A wet fast is only water. So when we talk about doing a modified keto cleanse. It is using products like bone broth, exogenous ketones that do have calories that supply all the nutrients and amino acids that are lost during a normal 60 some hour fasting state. People don't get, they don't get electrolyte deficient 60 hours because you're sleeping 24 of the hours. It would just be normal. You're adding a little bit extra time if you were doing a prep or if you had the flu. But again, think of the old practices. When people are sick, we used to have them not eat, have water and have oil. Or if your animal's sick, you don't force food because you need the digestive tract to relax, not be exposed to any more toxins. So I'm going to scroll through real quick and see if you guys have any questions. Know that you can always share this page with somebody, um, list questions later. 
So D. Christy, I think I got your question answered on that. Um, you guys are just watching. Nobody had any questions, which is awesome, which means I got my point across. So thanks for joining me, friends. I think this is day seven or day eight of my 30-day um, my 30 day Facebook Live. So if you haven't tried it, do it. It'll be fun to see what people want to come up with. I am going to put a poll um, on here tomorrow so I know what you guys want to know from. Kind of a nutrition poll. You want to know about fibromyalgia. You want to know more about diabetes. You want to know about my garden and my yard and my hedgehog out there. And why Italy Echinacea. Or why do we drink water? Or what is up with Kerrygold butter? I promise to be brief and short because I will be on vacation and I'll probably come live with some food stuff and say you can't eat healthy on vacation. Vacation to me is about resting my body. It's about getting a lot of sunshine, some exercise, get all those good brain neurotrophins go on. I will fast. I have not eaten yet today. We travel all day tomorrow and traveling can be stressful. So for me, I choose to fast today and tomorrow. And then we get there tomorrow night. I'll definitely have some lovely, lovely seafood and a bunch of greens with some kelp and some seaweed, all that good iodine that we need. And I will probably overindulge with my family because I love to eat fresh fish. So I'll probably eat too much protein and I'll eat way too much guacamole because I love, love, love guacamole on everything. So I will take some pork rinds, not the chips. So uh, we will be touching back in with you guys why I'm on vacation with 50% of my kids. I can only take two of the four this time because they have other obligations like jobs and military obligations. So let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you don't have questions or do have questions about this after you replay. Drop them down below. Um, Carrie, I would love to talk about fibromyalgia and autoimmune disease. So maybe give me a couple days. I generally do some research, read, make sure that I quote people like Victor Luongo on his 48-hour modified fast. So I'm bringing you current data that's credible, not just somebody trying to sell something, so to speak. But I am excited to have help coach the fourth upcoming Keto Reboot. Often in my time in my office, I'm coaching one person or maybe an athlete team at a time, Taekwondo cream, wrestling team, safely, how do we cut weight? And know that I actually had data here I was going to share with you. I'll probably post it later from our last keto reboot where we did extensive testing in our office metabolically and we saw that people lost percentage of fat it wasn't water so in a fast when your body's burning ketones after you get through the glucose and glycogen your body breaks the fat and breaks it down ketones preserve lean muscle mass it clicks on all those good brain fertilizer things we talked about and then you're not exposing your body to toxins it's a win-win situation so thank you guys for joining me i look forward to your questions chris uh, charla not christy charla i will put that on my list to chat about you guys have an amazing day and I look forward to hearing from you soon.